Now you're gonna see as I'm sculpting, it's not, it doesn't look great. It's kind of alias looking, it's kind of choppy looking. There's not a whole lot of detail going on in there. A couple different ways to alleviate that is to use either Dynamesh or subdivisions. So to keep it simple, let's talk about subdivisions here. So I'm sculpting on my object. And I'm like, you know what? I want to make this into, say, an octopus arm. But I can hold down Shift and smooth it. And I can use Standard Brush and hold down Alt to push it in. It's not doing much for me. So what you're going to want to do is go to your tool menu. And under Geometry for your object, you're going to see this Divide button. If you hover over that, you're going to see the hotkey for that is Control D. And what that's going to do, if I click that divide button, you're going to see it just adds a subdivision level to your object. So if I turn on polyframe now, you're going to see I got a bunch more lines in there. So now I can go ahead and sculpt on that. Now you're also going to see I have subdivision levels as a slider over here. So if I undo that, you're going to see it disappears. There's no slider. I hit divide. It's going to give me a subdivision level and I have a slider. So I can go back to subdivision level one or I can click and drag that, and now I'm in subdivision level two. So that's gonna be a pretty powerful feature as we move forward. But now we got a little bit more resolution. I can hit control D, which is the hotkey for divide, and I got even more resolution. So now I'm starting to get, you know, if I wanna do that octopus arm, I'm gonna have it coming down this way, hold down alt and kind of sculpt it this way and hold down shift. And I can turn off polyframe and I can start seeing a lot more detail now as I'm sculpting. And that's because I'm adding subdivisions. You're gonna notice up here, we have an active points. If I keep, keep hitting control D, that active points keeps going up. And it's basically taking every single face. If we go back, drag this back to subdivision one, and we go from one, so watch this face here. If I go from one to two, it's basically gonna divide that into four polygons. So every single face gets divided into four, and then divided into every face is divided again, and again. Every time it does that, it adds more geometry. So we have now we have 18,000 active points which means more resolution, but it's also taking up more space in memory and it's becoming a heavier mesh. It's just more stuff to keep track of. It's not a big deal. ZBrush can handle millions and millions of polygons without a problem. So don't be scared of that. It's just something to keep in mind. Now, one limitation of subdivisions is if you start doing any wacky stuff that starts pulling polygons in a direction, let's say I grab my move brush here and I just yank this and I yank it all the way out here. And it's like, okay, now I want to continue this octopus arm up and around the object. Oops, turn my polyframe off. So I'm going to just start sculpting. And it's going to see the details nice around here. I can hit Control D and I can start getting like, uh, actually, it's, you know, like we'll keep our standard brush. So we'll sculpt out some little spots here and then we can hold down Shift and kind of smooth that back to like little sucker pods. So we can keep doing that upper object. And eventually you're going to notice our resolution as we start getting here, it starts getting really bad. And if you click on your polyframe and you go down to subdivision level one, you're going to see the reason for that is each one of these faces is being divided into four and then four again and then four again as we subdivide. But because these faces are a lot larger, they've been skewed, they've been dragged. Um, when I divide this one into four, it's going to take up as much space as this single face here. So we have to subdivide this thing a lot in order to get the resolution up here to be as good as a resolution down here. But when we do that, it's subdividing the resolution all over the entire object. So these are gonna be super detailed and then these ones up here are just gonna be less detailed and they're just gonna kinda of lag behind the rest of the object. One way around that is to, if you're gonna be doing crazy experimental stuff like this and you don't quite know what your object's gonna look like yet, Dynamesh is an excellent way around that. And what that is, you're gonna see underneath geometry here, we have our subdivisions here. If we open up this Dynamesh menu, Here's where all of our Dynamesh options lie. Uh, if we turn on the Dynamesh button, what that's gonna do is you're gonna see it converted our object into a bunch of triangles. Now, one thing you did lose is our subdivision history. If I undo that, I can drop down to subdivision level one. Now, this is cool to have because if we're, let's say we're subdivision level five and we have a bunch of cool like detailed stuff in here, like a face. If I drop that down to subdivision level one, and then I use my move brush. You just tap move here and you can just move that out. And then you go back up. Those details follow along. So you're actually like moving a low resolution envelope around that has high resolution detail within its subdivision history. So you're kind of moving just, a, like I said, a low, resin, low resolution envelope that has subdivision history. So that's a cool thing about subdivision history. Uh, the bad thing is if you go too crazy and you start pulling polygons around, you're going to lose detail and ideally you're going to have nice even quads to sculpt on while you work. That's just going to make everything behave more predictably. 
Um, so you kind of you you pick one or the other basically. Uh, one thing you can do is start with Dynamesh. Well, at least in ZBrush you can. You start in Dynamesh and then um, in ZBrush you would like remesh and then subdivide and project detail. Uh, but in this one, I'm not quite sure. Doesn't look like that's an option. So what I'm probably going to do more in ZBrush Core is just use Dynamesh and Dynamesh Resolution to get more detail. So you do lose a little bit of functionality, but you gain a ton more functionality by using Dynamesh. 